happens to a mine when all the gold is gone? It becomes a grave where dreams come to die, where slaves find their chains and birds forget the sky, where beings never rest and diamonds fail to shine, where the strings of a puppeteer is the working man's tie, where we're pulled from post to post to please the ones up high. The corporate ladder broke, and many have failed the climb. The purpose of man is not lost, but stolen by the city's design. And now barren mine, mining us of our marrow and the minerals inside. The oldest of gold is the soul, so easily sold in this cold. A hole of horrors, a harem of whores, where bodies are sold and your knees are pawned. Vaginas galore, for a dime or a dollar. She arrived here a virgin and sold her clitora, had her eyes set on the sun when the horizon ignored her. She loped with the night, for the day never saw her, a lady of the night with an armor of horrors. She will sleep with you tonight and tomorrow with your brother. She has no care for your cock but the cash that you will throw her. So she lay bare in the light and allow you to explore her, but you'll never pay her enough for her to buy back her honor. She will bring you a delight, and despite all of her tortures, she will still dream of a light that she has seen beaming in the crevices of her life lived in a plight that she refuses to believe in. She believes dreams are divine and that it's the humans that weaken the dreams live in the night and that our kind easily reach them it seems she's the enlightened one continuing to smile when hope has lost its beacon she's in the business of love the service of embracing demons so she'll binge drink all the light that comes to her every weekend every man makes her wife and the marriage lasts for a season in the form of a few seconds or minutes of fun and freedom the thrill of a life lived unattained and attached to a single human a queen with calloused hands feigning a failing beauty obscene and underdressed sworn to fulfill her duty and give hunger her best tantric goddess waiting for god -o at the corner of polly and commissioner missionary specialist visionary catalyst in the business of pleasure an expert in the fields of fornication informally educated in the complicated dynamics of copulation a master of sex a sentinel of satisfaction a guru in seduction uhuru is a whore freedom Wisdom can't be tainted, love cannot be tamed. Sex is a merging of spirits, spun in time and space. In a network of sex workers, all is one and the same. Intermingled and unmangled, intertwined and unnamed. The city sings in sirens, accompanied by screams. The symphonies of violence, the music made by thieves. They've taken my appliance vines of my pleas that will take what they require and retire as they flee they'll break into your car and carve you out of your seat they'll replace you on the tar and charge away at the speed of a light they've never seen the dark is their delight in a night of stolen dreams they would like for you to fight so they can kill you for a reason to justify their actions to a pack of crying fiends who multiply in factions to affect your entire being. We walk around in fear at the gaze of fire demons. We sail the night in fright of the flame inside these gremlins. We hope to stay alive, but know that death is pending. There's a special kind of knife that will bring you to your ending on the most terrible of nights that will sting you for refusing and retire out of sight with your winter steins hanging dangling over your thighs. I've seen a man dying and couldn't cover my eyes. I could hear all of his cries and saw his spirit subside, but I knew he had forgiven them, for he saw what lay inside. There were troubled souls and suffering, seeking means to survive. There were 
frightened and in panic, simply broken in mind. They have seen the darkest corridors, they were beaten into crime. There were once little boy children who fought the streets for their lives. While we were playing with toy soldiers, they were handling knives to protect themselves from monsters. They couldn't cower and hide, and now the streets have simply hardened them. Their hearts no longer alive, they were broken into pieces and pierced a thousand times. They have never known of kindness. To them, the world is simply cruel, and they are cruel and kind. They simply never got the chance to see it like you and I. Now they've grown up to millions in everyone else's eyes. We are blood guns. Blood shoots out of us so often, it's made us popular coughing out a generation of orphans often offered up for sacrifice. Drops of blood bludgeoned out from within. Black blood has always been too thin. It's always run too fast. Even after feet give in, it knows what it means to keep running. Our blood keeps running out of ideas how to matter, on how to be worth something. It keeps running, rampant in the streets, looking for faster feet, looking for freedom, looking for something to eat, looking for healing. Our blood leaves our bodies screaming because maybe they'll listen if it's not speaking from behind black skin. Every blood trail leads to a black body lying still somewhere. Trying to run away, trying to show them our pain, trying to have them refrain from shooting, from looting our land, from exploiting our chapped hands. It keeps running, running down the same streets that are named in the name of black blood seeping. Our bodies are too familiar with the concrete. Our blood has been running on it for centuries, dripping from white hands. And today even black blood have, 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 black hands have black blood on their hands as we speak. It keeps running. There's nothing more familiar to the other than bullets to black skin. Something about hot metal and melanin has become too kin. S something about... Something about blacks who don't run results in fatal stings. A bullet never lies, but it loves it when black people lie. Bleeding, with their blood running, and their hearts no longer beating. If a bullet didn't know where to go, it would go to a black thing. That's what's most familiar to it. As with heat sensing missiles, it senses melanin and goes in. If a bullet had a home, it would be inside Azania's children. If a bullet could speak, it would speak in one of our indigenous tongues and immediately head towards its kin. But then again, this country is a broken machine. The cogs are cocked guns. The calls for change are the flung bricks and the clutch sticks we swing before we run. A bullet fathered by a gun, a gun fathered by a finger, a finger fathered by a blue giant, a blue giant fathered by a tyrant, a tyrant who tears apart all he finds defiant. What else did I die for if not a spot on a museum wall? If not to have my name on a dirty street? If not to be a sinking song before the marching hordes begin to flee. What else did I expect to be? What else is revolution for if not to bleed? The only thing that revolves are the doors through which we each leave the mouth of the beast. I am counting all the fallen and I am running out of fingers. I figure the figure is a, is a number that infinitely breathes and breeds more of itself as it heaves. History only recognizes blood. The book
books are written in red mud and red through tears as our insides tear apart. The razor wire is there to constrict our hearts. They raise our wise fathers and write them off as wild thugs. The rays of white lies, the raids on our broken lives. We are raging ravenous crowds, raising the how that lives inside us. We are ready to topple it down. We're barely surviving anyway. Some of us would much rather die than live in this vile thing you call a country. Some of us are already dead. Some of us are dying inside. Some of us see the bullets coming and decide not to hide. Some of us simply protest as a nobler form of suicide. Some of us is most of us. Most of us just one. 